Um, I do believe that we are already in the age of adaptation and what that means is that climate change is no longer a future issue. In some ways we lie to ourselves when we talk about climate as if it is something that is going to happen. Uh, by my estimation for at least about two and a half billion people, two and a half billion people, climate change is a reality today. It's a reality they are living with. Whether it is fires in Australia, whether it is floods in Pakistan, whether it is drought in India, whether it is heat waves across Europe, that is a real manifestation that is impacting people in real ways, forcing them to make decisions about their livelihoods and ultimately about displacement. When we think about any migration, the first thing to remember is that most migration happens locally. It happens sometimes within your own region, it happens within your own country, and if not your country, neighboring countries. A, because that is easier. B, because that is convenient. C, because migrants keep the hope that they're going to move back. Now, this is going to be even more important for climate migration for the following reason. Climate migration, for a very large part, will be not just disaster prone, it will be more like economic migration. I will move because my livelihood goes away. I will move not because a disaster happened only, but because uh, rising sea level made the fish and the shrimp that I was dependent on disappear. So what am I going to do? I'm going to move from my region to a major city, maybe to a major city in another country, and maybe from there somewhere else. So this is, this is a much more complex um, situation than a disaster happens in one place and people move. We are already seeing this. We are seeing this in South Asia. We are seeing this in Bangladesh. We are seeing this in parts of Africa. And I think one of the keys is to think about focus on livelihoods as a key driver of what is going to make and is making people move. One thing to remember is we have our fingerprints on this crisis. So if the climate is changing in Bangladesh, it leads back to my emissions in Boston or your emissions in Vienna. So first, there is this circle and therefore there is a responsibility. This is not simply about helping people. This is closing that circle. But more than that, I think, I think this is true for all migration, but certainly for climate migration, the best approach is to do things so that the migration doesn't happen. And we know how to do that. It's called sustainable development. In a way to invest in livelihoods, to invest in alternatives because what is usually happening is I'm depending dependent on a livelihood that is unsustainable to begin with. Climate makes it fall off. Now I have no options. So what do we do? What do you do? What I, do I do? We create options. And if those options are better for the future, there is a win-win here. You stop migration, climate migration, or at least reduce it, and you build a world that is sustainable in terms of development.